Um, this next one is a fantasy, a total fantasy. It's called If England Win the World Cup. <laughs> if England win the World Cup, there'll be riots in the streets of little old ladies marching out and tangling up their pleats in all the beer boys who'll celebrate by falling over drunk. For one whole week there'll be no school, the workforce will do a bunk, and everyone will party in the rainbow-coloured streets, all frolicking and innocent like it's 1966. <laughs> Churches will be empty. There'll be no need for prayer. Even God will be off duty, he'll be in the fox and hare, or the Winchester, having a pint with the regulars and discussing England's goals. Yes, he'll say if questioned, football can save souls. <laughs> If England win the World Cup, time will take a rest, so it can watch the parades on telly and keep itself abreast of all the minute happenings in the life of David Beckham, who'll be knighted, sainted, wrapped in aspic and given the keys to Beckham, because it rhymes, the mayor will say, <laughs> a wry smile on his face, as he quietly ignores the fact that Beckham no longer plays. If England win the World Cup, celebrity culture will die out, it won't just be the beautiful who carry all the clout. Jude Law will take up football and to give their career some gloss, the ghost goalposts at the next World Cup will be Nicole Kidman and Kate Moss. <laughs> if England win the World Cup, there'll only be good news. Peace will break out overnight. Penitent Palestinians and apologetic Jews will get to grips in the Gaza Strip to untangle all their hate. And in Iraq, the armies will hold an enormous village fate, with cricket in the bomb sites and tea amongst the rubble. All the trouble spots in the world will suddenly want for trouble. If England win the World Cup, there'll be chariots of fire, driven by happy Englishmen wearing their Nike shoes of desire. And the team will be immortalized in bronze by Damien Hurst. No. <laughs> There's only one thing standing in the way, they've got to qualify first. <laughs>